a seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William steam locomotive part 18. Refitting the blast pipe and repairing one of the displacement lubricators, scrapping most of the original turret, including the faulty pressure gauge. Then taking a closer look at the turret and safety valves. But first, the time has come to fit the newly repainted blast pipe in position. First, I need access to the smoke box, which of course is very simple, particularly when I remove the crossbar. Here you can see the three fittings that are put in there in the last episode. And with a bit of luck, the blast pipe will screw into position through the hole in the bottom of the smoke box. But first, I need to remove the masking tape on the threads. This is the part of the blast pipe that screws into the T-piece from the cylinders, quite a way down underneath the smoke box, and I'm beginning to think that maybe I should have silver soldered the nut a little bit higher on the pipe. But anyway, I'll find out soon whether it's all going to work. The main reason why I silver soldered this nut in the position you see is because it was the most damaged part of the pipe. Why was the pipe damaged? Well, it was originally fitted using a pair of grips, and when I unfitted it, I also had to use some grips. And this made the existing marks on the copper tube worse, but you can't see them now. This part in my hand is the blast nozzle, and it screws on top of the blast pipe like this. The purpose of the blast nozzle is to focus the exhaust steam into a jet up the chimney, which in turn draws the fire. The trouble is, if you get the size of the hole in the blast nozzle wrong, then, if it's too small, the fire gets a bit overdrawn and can melt the grate, I speak from experience, and if it's too big, there's insufficient blast pressure to draw the fire. Remember, it's the speed of the steam going up the chimney, not necessarily the volume, that causes the vacuum in the smoke box. In this part of the clip, I'm finishing the installation by tightening the gland nut to make sure this part is definitely airtight. It's very important that no air from the outside world can leak into the smoke box and destroy the vacuum. And as I refit the smoke box door, you can see how good a fit it is. The smoke box door has to be an airtight seal against the smoke box itself. It reminds me of the lid on a pressure cooker. But in this case, it isn't pressure that it's holding back. The smoke box door maintains the vacuum in the smoke box. And while still on the subject of vacuums, this vacuum will be much better when the boiler is fitted to the rear of the smoke box. And it is this vacuum that will draw the fire in the fire box via the fire tubes. It's shown on the drawing to make two displacement lubricators for the cylinders, one for each cylinder. And here are the two displacement lubricators from this particular engine. They're not going to be used as displacement lubricators because the engine has a mechanical lubricator. But these are still fully functional displacement lubricators that would just need draining and filling with oil, which could be useful if ever the mechanical lubricator was to fail. One of the hand wheels, or should I say the shaft that the hand wheel is mounted on, needs some attention. The hole in the hand wheel is squared, and so is the shaft. The only problem is, this one needs re-threading 7BA. Originally, it was fitted with a 6BA nut that was massively too big. This clip shows the hand wheel now held in place using a 7BA nut. To finish the job, I ground off some of the nut to make it look like this one at the other side. I will give these lubricators a good clean and fit them back onto the engine after I've fitted the boiler. Once I get the boiler back, there's going to be quite a lot of things to do at it. Not really the boiler itself, that's been certified and tested, but I need to make blanking plugs, I need to make a new turret. I've been asked to fit a turret isolation valve, and what I'm doing at the moment is dismantling the old turret, just to have a look at how it's put together. The pressure gauge is faulty. When I apply some pressure, the pressure registers on the gauge no problem. When I let go of the pressure, the needle does not return back to the stop, so I'm going to change this. I'll buy a replacement 2-inch diameter gauge. There's going to be quite a shopping list for parts from Blackgate's engineering for this job. I'm not going to reuse any of these taper plug taps. They will be replaced with commercial fittings. To the right of the turret, on screen at the moment, you can see the water gauges. These are completely unserviceable as far as I'm concerned. 
and in their place I'm going to fit commercial three cock water gauges. And the thread on the end of the new water gauges needs to be the same as on these, 1 8 BSP. I think I'm going to need a bigger scrap box. There's quite a way to go yet and the scrap box is nearly full. This was meant to be today's video, Tuesday the 10th of January, the day that the boiler's due to arrive, but unfortunately the boiler arrived early. So no video today, I'll post this one tomorrow. And tomorrow afternoon I'll be working on the boiler, which is currently sat on the frames, but still needs a fair bit doing to it before I can fit it into the smoke box. For instance, it needs blanking plugs. I also think it's a good idea to refit the cladding before I fix the boiler back in position. I'll start this job tomorrow. You will see exactly where I am with the job when I go into the workshop in the morning. This puzzled me. The thread is phosphor bronze. It's a different colour. And if you look closely, it is a thread insert in the brass part. Perfectly permissible. This is OK because phosphor bronze is stronger than brass and less prone to desinkification when it's screwed into a steel boiler. I think I'm probably going to make a new turret or modify this one, I'm not sure yet. I could actually cut this one up and put this valve in the centre. That would give me the isolation that I need and it would look very steam-like. Some valves that I've seen don't look steam-like at all. They look like they've come off washing machines. I'm trying to avoid using that type. Here are the safety valves, very substantial units, and for safety purposes I'm going to fit a locking mechanism to stop the top parts being moved accidentally. I'm no expert on BSP threads, BSP standing for British Standard Pipe, but I think these are quarter BSP. The holes in the safety valves are quarter of an inch in diameter. I have a box full of BSP fittings, and currently I'm trying one for size, and this one definitely fits and I'm fairly sure that this is quarter BSP. A while ago I was in B&Q and I bought these. They were very cheap. They are water isolation valves, but when I read the spec on them, they will not stand the temperature, and I don't want the steam locomotive to look like a washing machine anyway. There are a couple of avenues open to me for this job. I can visit a plumber's merchant and buy some fittings off the shelf for blanking plugs and such like, or I can make them myself using a combination of phosphor bronze, silver solder and brass. I'm not going to waste valuable time and repair things like this old pressure gauge, I'm just going to buy a new one. Don't forget, time is money, and the time it takes me to repair it and then have it calibrated is really not worth the trouble. It's often far cheaper to replace. On the surface, the safety valves do look OK, but I will take a closer look at them. I'm hoping that these also have phosphor bronze threaded inserts in them. And that is it for this episode. The boiler's in the workshop, sat on the frames, all ready for me to work on it tomorrow. To conclude this episode, all I have to say is stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.